Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be discussing Thyroid Beginner Series number 9, and today is all about NDT, otherwise known as Natural Desiccated Thyroid, and I want to talk about, is this medication the best thyroid medication out there? Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about some of the basics and the problems with the medication and why people feel that it's the best and so on and so forth. So let's jump right into all of these things. Now, first, you kind of have to have an understanding of what NDT is, the the basics really of, of what it is so that you can understand um, the other things that we're going to be discussing. So first of all, NDT is a type of thyroid medication and it stands for natural desiccated thyroid. Now if you break that apart, natural meaning from some sort of natural source, right? In this case it's from uh, porcine or pigs. Uh, desiccated means that it's dried out, uh, much like desiccated coconut or something like that, anything that any food that's desiccated. And then of course the thyroid refers to the thyroid hormone. So if you take this all together, essentially what we're doing is we're taking the thyroid glands from a uh, porcine source or from pigs and we're desiccating that up and we're standardizing it to include all to us to include a certain amount, a specific amount of thyroid hormones in each what is called grain of um, this this uh, porcine derived thyroid hormone. Now because it comes from this natural pig source, many people think that it's superior, but it's always important to remember that all thyroid hormones are bioidentical, meaning the T4 that your body produces naturally is the T4 that is in Synthroid, in Levothyroxine, and in natural de desiccated thyroid. Now the source is different, for instance, could be created in a lab and manufactured out of some other base chemicals, but so, so that's like the synthetic portion, but the porcine portion would come from a natural source like an animal. But either way, it's the same hormone once it gets inside your body. Now, where NDT differs is that it contains other hormones and pro-hormones inside because it, because it contains a portion of that thyroid gland. So that's one of the reasons that it's felt to be superior is that there's more than just the T4 and the T3. There's also some of the other less biologically active thyroid hormones such as T2 um, and then some other hormones as well and probably precursors to, horm to hormones because it's kind of silly to assume that we know exactly what is in our thyroid gland and exactly the function of every single thing, every other hormone that's in there. We, we just don't, believe it or not. As much as we think we know, we, we don't. So that's, that's sort of what NDT is in a nutshell. Now NDT is standardized to contain about 38 micrograms of T4 and 9 micrograms of T3 in each grain, which is the unit of measurement of NDT. Now what you'll notice from that is it contains both the, the inactive sort of reservoir hormone T4 and also the active uh, thyroid hormone, which is T3, which is really good because it combines those two things together, which is great. Now um, the ratio of these is about 76% T4 to about 23% T3, which is fairly similar to the, the ratio that your body produces naturally of about 80 to 20. Now there's some variability obviously among individuals, but that ratio is pretty pretty close, I would say, you know, 76, 23 versus 80, 20. And the good part is that you're getting both of those. And that's another reason why people think that it's that it's one of the better medications because it's coming with that ratio built into it. Now, medications that fit this classification of NDT and that are dose based upon the grain that we're talking about and have much of the same characteristics with the exception of some some of the ways that they're processed and their bind, binders and their fillers would include medications like Armour Thyroid, which is one of the most popular, uh, WP Thyroid is another one, Nature Thyroid, NP Thyroid, and so on. There's a bunch of different names for these medications depending upon where you live. So different countries produce, you know, different pharmacies in different countries produce a different type but it, it's a, it has the same characteristics, or roughly the same. The idea is that it's a, it's a desiccated hormone from a natural source, and it contains some set amount of T4 and T3. All right, so th that's the, those are the basics. Now let's get into, is NDT a superior to T4 medication? Because that's really what most people believe. Now there's a, there's a large subgroup of patients, and I would say even doctors out there, that no matter what, just want to give everyone NDT. And if you're not feeling well, NDT is the answer. And if you take NDT and you still don't feel well, then dose is the problem or some other issue is the problem. And there may be some truth to that, um, but I don't think that that's the only way to look at this. So I think NDT is a, is a great medication, uh, but not everyone necessarily needs to be using it. Remember, there are, there is a large group of patients that 
can convert T4 to T3 relatively well, so they don't necessarily need T3. And in fact, if those patients take NDT or T3, they may t experience some of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, which we'll get to uh, in just a minute. So uh, let's talk about some of the common problems that kind of pop up when using NDT if you're a patient. Now, I would say one of the first and biggest problems that I see among patients is the fact that they try to solve all problems with the use of NDT as, you know, just sort of the, the brute force mechanism by which they're going to solve all their problems. Now, this leads to this leads to some big issues, and I'm going to pull this up. So the use and abuse of desiccated thyroid. So this went way back into the 1950s. People were seeing this, where people were being put on something like six to eight grains of NDT trying to fix the problem. And it, believe it or not, this, they were being used in this way for weight loss even back in the 50s. So this is not a new thing. Now, the problem is when you give patients that much, that high of a dose, it does increase their metabolic rate, helps them lose a, little, lose a little bit of weight, but once you take down the medication, because they can't stay on it forever, it's just way too high, that, that metabolism goes back down to below normal, and then they regain all the weight back. So you really can't brute force your way out of this by taking thyroid to try and lose weight. It's not the answer. Now, you can take thyroid if you have problems with your weight, and you are also hypothyroid, but you can't brute force your way into it. So that's one of the big issues. So it's overdosing with this medication. Another one is, the, another problem is that it, the dosing is static, which means that each grain that you take has a set amount of T4 and T3. So if somebody is doing really well on whatever, let, let's say the, let's say they need 90-10 ratio of T4 to T3 as opposed to the 76-23 that comes in NDT. You can't really do much with that because you're stuck at the dose. So that's one of the potential issues. Not a huge one, but one of them. Um, another problem is that there are some patients experience variations in free T3 and free T4 levels where they're really, really responsive to the T3, but the T4 is not as responsive. So, And usually the TSH plummets in these individuals. So there's lots of variation. There, there's some subgroup of people that just doesn't respond very well in terms of how their labs look after they're taking NDT. Um, and it may be difficult for these people to become, to, to resolve their symptoms as a result of these changes. Uh, another issue is that some people just cannot tolerate the T3 that's in there. And so they, they start getting symptoms like palpitations or hair loss or anxiety or jittery, even with really, really, really small doses, like a quarter of a grain, which is, you know, very, very small doses. So it's one quarter of 38 micrograms and nine micrograms. So and I could do the math, but it's, it's a small amount. And so there's just these people that just don't respond very well to T3 and they might respond a lot better to T4. So you sort of have to play around with that. Another issue is that it's hard to break down for some people in the intestines. The way that it's packaged and formulated, it contains various fillers and dyes. And I'll admit this is a problem that extends to almost all thyroid medications, but it's still important to consider. Um, and the last one is that this is a possibility. It doesn't work. It's not an issue all the time, but you always have to keep it in the back of your mind. You are taking a foreign substance because it's porcine derived, which means it's from an animal. That means that if you that you may have some sort of immunogenic reaction to it, or your body may not recognize it as not as foreign tissue and attack it, or whatever, or lead to some issue with your immune system, which could theoretically make problems worth is worse, especially if you have. <clears throat> sorry. Sorry about that. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So you, you always need to keep that in the back of your head. Um, and, and if you're taking NDT and you're feeling worse, make sure you look at the antibodies because they may have, you know, you may have stirred up the hornet's nest, which is your immune system, by taking it. So having said all that, are, are there some people that should consider to use NDT? And I would say absolutely yes. And I would say in many cases, it's probably a good idea to start with T4 because it's, it's a relatively benign and safe medication. And if it's not working in six to eight weeks, then you can switch right to NDT without much issue. You don't have to stay on it for a year or six months or 18 months, but just give it a six to eight week trial first, then switch to NDT. So if you failed T4 medication, NDT would be potentially be a great option. Um, the next one is those with low free T3 levels. So if you're taking T4, now this would kind of fall in the subcategory of failing, N failing T4 medication. But if you have low free T3, then consider using NDT. It'd be very reasonable. Um, you don't have to use NDT, but you could use um, NDT as, as another source. And then I would say lastly, another good group would be those who are, who are post-thyroidectomy meaning they don't have a thyroid anymore, or it's been damaged by, by radioactive iodine ablation therapy. The reason for that is most of these patients need some element of T3. Remember, under normal circumstances, the body's producing about 80% T4 and about 20% T3. So giving NDT gives them about that percentage. So a lot of people just perk right up when they get that T3 in. So those are some of the people that should use it. Now, there's this isn't the, an all-inclusive list, but it's a good, it gives you a good starting point. 
point as to where you should go. So that's pretty much it with NDT. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, it's, it's a good medication, but I don't think it's the best by any means. I really don't think there is a best. I think it depends on the person. But if you have any questions about NDT, if NDT has changed your life, if you've taken it, I know there's a lot of people that fall into that category. Leave a comment below. If you have questions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next one.